Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Nightly Sports Call. And welcome to the Sports Call. Jeff Hathorne in for Bob, Rich, or Josh, or any of them. I'm here with you on College Football Saturday, the first College Football Saturday of the year. And, man, was it interesting. I, you know, if you're a Pitt fan, it was fun for a half, then crazy for a half, and then whew, for an end. And if you're Penn State, man, with the exception of an early interception by McSorley, uh, they rolled all over Akron, and that meshes together for what's going to happen next Saturday. So I wasn't at the Pitt game. I followed along from here at the station. And obviously, they, they got it going. Three long drives, kind of traditional type pit football, not the stuff we've seen from Matt Canada last year or even the year before that with some of the trick plays and gadget plays. And maybe, it, indeed, it was early. They were going very vanilla. They didn't want to show anything to Penn State, but, man, it almost came back to burn them. You know, they get those three long drives. Seems like they have the running game going. Brown was efficient, if not great. They didn't look down the field a ton. And... 21-0, you figured, okay, it's Youngstown State. They're going to bury them. Even at 21-7, you thought, okay, but some missed opportunities. They get the ball down at the four. They get nothing. A couple of missed field goals, including one at the end that forced the overtime. So if you're at the game or you're a Pitt fan and you're heading into the week of the season, at least in the non-conference part of the season, and most would say the week of this season, when you look back to last year and how big that Penn State win was, how are you feeling going in? Are you able to brush that off as, well, they just lost intensity for a half and they're going to have intensity for the whole half at Penn State? Or are you scared? I mean, are you thinking you're going to go in to Beaver Stadium, they're going to be waiting, and it's not going to be pretty? Uh, So where are you at, Pitt fans? 412-575-2600 is the number here at the Nightly Sports Call. And if you're a Penn State fan, You're probably feeling pretty good. They checked off all the boxes. The defense, outstanding against Akron's offense. Saquon Barkley, 226 all-purpose yards, a couple of touchdowns. McSorley, after the early pick, 280 yards and a couple of touchdowns as well. He ran for a touchdown. Mike Gesicki, the All-American tight end, catches a couple of touchdowns. I mean, they looked perfect. They got a punt return for a score. I don't think there was much that Penn State did wrong in their game. So where are you feeling if you're a Penn State fan? We'll get your thoughts on that. Cut day for the Steelers, for all the NFL. And the Steelers, once again, make a couple of deals. Ross Cockrell, gone to the Giants. Probably would have cut him anyhow, so they get a conditional draft pick for him. So I think kudos to Kevin Colbert for at least getting something for a guy you probably weren't going to keep. Sammy Coates was right on that line. If they were going to keep Sammy Coates or not, they decided to trade him to the Cleveland Browns. Now... Joe Hayden comes from the Browns to the Steelers. Steeler fans like, yay, you know, this is great because you're picking up a guy from inside your conference. You're going to make him eat it. Are you worried about Sammy Coates doing it now to the Steelers with still questions in that secondary? Or do you look at what Coates did as a Steeler and say he's just going to be this inconsistent guy who battles injuries and battles drops and something that you saw a lot of? Terrell Watson makes the team. Uh, One of those guys... You see a lot of camp phenoms, a lot of guys that have good numbers in the preseason that don't make it. But it's his second year out of Azusa Pacific, and it seemed like he really had it going. He had that north-south type of running game, weighs 240, did everything he could, did a lot of special teams, and must have won the coaches over on special teams because he makes the team, Niall Davis, out. Fitz Tucson, who had lost some weight, and that – There was a lot of talk of him, at least in OTAs, about that lost weight and what that's going to mean for him. He's played in playoff games for you. Obviously, he's had a big mistake in a playoff game, but he has that experience for you. They cut him loose. Senquez Golson never gets on the field. How about the sixth-round pick? Colin Holba. Colin Holba. I don't need to worry about pronouncing it anymore because he's gone. Maybe he ends up on the practice squad. But he's the only draft pick that you don't keep And it was probably the most controversial pick of any of them. Colin Holba, gone. What are your thoughts on some of the Steeler moves? Uh, Kobe Hamilton, released. Deshaun Phillips, the guy they brought over from Washington, more depth in that secondary. It seems like they pretty much have figured that out. David Johnson, the tight end, released. Uh, Your thoughts on the Steelers' moves today. And also, 
with college football and everything else going on. There was a Pirate victory today, and finally, the Buccos played some young guys. Elias Diaz had a hit. Jordan Luplo not only had his first major league hit, also hit his first major league homer, a three-run shot. So what do you know? The Pirates play the young guys. They don't trot out the old guys in there, and they pay off for them. So we'll get your thoughts on all of that. 412-575-2600. It's a busy night here on the Nightly Sports Call.